The fourth lesson on the Lord Jesus Christ has to do with the two natures of Christ. Uh, Jesus is truly human and truly divine and yet one person. So let's look at his human nature first. Uh, One of the first heresies that the early Christians faced was was the denial of Jesus' humanity. Oddly, his divine nature wasn't really debated. It was his human nature in the first century that was debated. But as the verses before you show, Jesus was fully man. He, he He was human. And note that Paul calls him the man, Christ Jesus. He was born of a woman, as we've seen. The gospel accounts demonstrate that Jesus was fully human and yet without sin. He had to eat, he had to rest, he had to sleep, he got tired, he had to learn, he had to be made made like his fellow human beings to be the sacrifice for their sins, our sins. Uh, This is just basic, historic, orthodox Christian teaching. But also his divine nature. Uh, Listen to some of these references to the divine nature of Christ. I think of John 1, 1 as a classic example. Uh, The Word was God, and the Word became flesh. And uh, in John 20, 28, uh, my Lord and my God, uh, Jesus is referred to as God. Romans 9, 5, uh, the Christ who is God. Philippians 2, 6, uh, in the form of God. Uh, Colossians 1, uh, he's the image of the invisible God. Or or Colossians 2, 9, for in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily. Uh, Titus 2.13, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. We could give a number of examples uh, similar to this, but as a church leader and teacher, you need to know the basic verses on the divine nature of Christ. Many liberal Protestants deny that Jesus was divine or that he was God. Muslims, for instance, vehemently deny deny, deny the divine nature of Christ. So look at some of these passages Uh, Look at these verses. You you should know Colossians 2.9, for instance, really well. Not only do we have these direct assertions that Jesus is God, uh, in the Gospels, Jesus displays the attributes of God. He is one with the Father, an acronym that's been personally helpful to me for just remembering the divine nature of Christ is the acronym HANDS, H-A-N-D-S. Uh, He has the honors of the Father, H. Uh, The attributes of the Father. Uh, He shares the names of the Father, the deeds of the Father, and the seat of the Father. There are literally hundreds of passages about the divine nature of Christ. But be sure you can open up the scriptures and and show someone key verses on the divine nature of Christ. Uh, When a Jehovah's Witness knocks on your door and tries to explain to you that Jesus does not have a divine nature or is not the second member of the Trinity, uh, you need to know where to go in Scripture and open up your Bible and show them. And this is your responsibility, especially as a church leader. Uh, you need to be able to help people who are struggling with who Jesus Christ is and claim to be. And as a result, quite honestly, we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. Hebrews one tells us that all the angels of God worship him. Uh, in Revelation uh, 4 and 5, we see all of heaven worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Next, we see Christ's preexistence and eternality. Uh, since Jesus is God, it follows that he preexisted before he was born of Mary. He has the attribute of eternality. Jesus came down from heaven. He came into the world. He takes on the divine name. He takes on the divine name, I am. Uh, It existed, he existed before the foundation of the world. He's before all things. He is the first and the last. You cannot say this about any other human teacher or religious leader. Jesus is absolutely unique and incomparable. Think of passages like this. Uh, John 8, 58. Before Abraham was, I am. Or John 17, 24. You love me before the foundation of the world. Uh, Colossians 1, 17. And he is before all things. Hebrews 13, 8. He's the same yesterday and today and forever. Or Revelation 1, 8. I am the first and the last. 
Next, let's take a look at the sinlessness of Christ. It is affirmed repeatedly in the scriptures that Jesus is without sin. He is sinless. In fact, his most bitter enemies could not find fault with him. Everything he did was pleasing to his father. He was the perfect son. His sinless nature was essential to his substitutionary atoning work upon the cross. As Paul says, God made him to be sin who knew no sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Jesus did not need to atone for his own sin. He had no sin. He was, he was the perfect son of God. And in this way, Jesus was different, is different from all of us. It, it, it's interesting that the four gospels presented an absolutely perfect man. And, and again, if this isn't true, it's a joke. Uh, consider verses like this. Uh, Hebrews 4.15, he is tempted as we are yet without sin. Hebrews 7.26, he's separated from sinners. Uh, 1 John 3.5, he appeared to take away sins. In him is no sin. Uh, so let's, let's also take a look at the, the death, burial, and resurrection and the ascension of Christ. As you uh, read the four Gospels, you see that, that even from the beginning, everything points to his death. Uh, major parts of the gospel concern his death or going to the cross. I mean, literally half of the gospels are Jesus setting his face to go to Jerusalem. His mission was to die for the sins of the world. Uh, the cross of Christ is central to our gospel message. We preach Christ crucified, Paul said. And in giving the gospel, it's important to know 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. Paul says that he delivered what was of first importance. The gospel is of first importance. Uh, what he received from Christ. That Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. This is one of the finest summaries of the gospel. Uh, you do not know Jesus Christ if you do not know his death upon the cross, his burial, his bodily resurrection, and bodily ascension into heaven. This is the Christ of scriptures. Uh, we'll look at, in a later lesson more at the death of Christ and his resurrection as it relates to the gospel message. But the last thing I want to mention are, are the three offices of Christ. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. He is our great high priest. He intercedes for us in heaven to God the Father. He is the prophet of God that Moses predicted. And he is the coming king. He, he is king of kings and lord of lords. And unlike any other king, his rule is eternal and his kingdom is eternal. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's worship him. Amen. He is, he is prophet, priest, and king. Let's serve him with our whole hearts. He's worthy of it. Amen. Elders, he is worthy of our service.